All right. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody can hear me. This is Cesar Abed from PM from the, from the, for the masses .com and the Construction Industry Podcast. And uh, I'm very excited to bring you this first um, free training that, that um, myself and Farnoosh um, uh, are doing tonight for you guys. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty there at the beginning, so that's why we're a couple <laughs> minutes late. But uh, I have here Farnoosh, and I see that a number of you guys have joined the, the the webinar already so feel free to post questions um, as you um, as you go along and we'll be able to see them and uh, let how about we get started for yeah sounds good it's uh, past the 8 30 that time that we said so let's do it let's do it okay. alrighty so again so tonight I'm, I feel very fortunate here that we're able to bring in this free uh, training and this is going to be full of actionable steps and um, and hopefully you'll be able to start applying uh, them to your career and your job, uh, maybe even starting tomorrow. So I invited my friend and career expert, Farnoosh Brock, here to talk to us about the five career suicide mistakes that project managers make. And uh, uh, Farnoosh comes from, uh, from um, a long engineering and project management background, and she's going to give us a little bit of a background on her there during the, during the talk. And... Um, and then her background is with corporate corporate uh, America. She is in, uh, she's in the United States. So today she's a full time entrepreneur, and she's passionate to help um, us overcome overcome our career struggles and achieve a whole new level of success. And I'm really excited about this because really our mutual goal here is to to give you some solid content that can make a difference for you. So please uh, pay attention for the next uh, next hour or so. And now I will turn it over to our presenter tonight, Farnoosh Brock. Thank you so much, uh, Cesar. I am so happy to be here with all of you tonight. I'm just going to start sharing my screen here. If you give me a moment and if you let me know whether you can see it, please. I can see your screen. Okay, excellent. All right, so we're going to get started. So as Cesar said, uh, we are here to give you some free tips tonight that you can start using starting tomorrow. And the title of the talk is Five Career Suicide Mistakes That Project Managers Make and How to Avoid Them. And I want to add to that, that if you have made some of these mistakes, I help you recover from them. So I am Farnoosh Brock, and I'm president and founder of Prolific Living, and I am so happy to be here with you tonight. So let's get started. All right, so I like to set expectations so you know what you're going to get out of this by the time you leave. So by the end of this training, I promise you that if you pay attention, you will beware of the five career suicide mistakes that a lot of project managers make so that you can avoid them. You will know how to avoid and recover from each of them. So our goal is to identify the mistakes, but really focus on what you can do about them so that you are on top of the game, on top of uh, your career. And then we're going to talk to you about ways that you can think further ahead. How are you going to get noticed and get promoted and get the money that you deserve at your job? So we're going to talk about an opportunity there that can help you advance your careers. And um, our vision, so Caesar mentioned that we have a mutual vision here, is to help you showcase yourself as a true leader in your organization. Because most of us, especially when I was a new project manager and my fellow project managers, we were tired, we were overwhelmed with work and often frustrated. And that is not how you get noticed and get promoted in your company and organization. So that's the vision that I want you to have in mind. And one more thing that I want to say before we get into the training is ask yourself how much you plan to get out of this training. Because how much you pay attention is going to help you. So if you plan to be here fully present for the whole presentation, then set up your environment, set up your, your iPhone, your, your uh, distractions in a way that supports you and so you can pay full attention. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I want to tell you a little bit about my own corporate career story. I spent 12 years in a Fortune 100 technology company. I was an engineer and a project manager. And during this time, I made every mistake and more that I share with you here tonight. And the 
The good news is I was able to recover from that and build such a successful career in the latter part of my career that it it really surprised me just how much I could turn things around. And to give you some tangible results as to what I was able to do after I used the exact tips and strategies that I share here with you tonight, I was able to double my salary. This is in the course of the three years that I started to really wake up and apply real strategies to my career. I was able to double my base salary. I was able to triple my bonus money. So our company gave out bonuses and this is not just for salespeople on a commission. We were able to just qualify for a bonus, which was a good percentage of our income. So that was really sweet. I was able to really earn what I was worth. But here is the kicker. I was able to half my workload. So I was working half as hard to, to get all of this compensation. I was able to negotiate global travel on my projects and I became a full-time telecommuter. So I had tons of flexibility. So this is to show you that what I talk to you here tonight works. It has worked for me and I have applied it to my clients and my students. And um, these are the things that can really turn your career around. So today, today I'm an entrepreneur today. I am really passionate about helping you build your career, not sabotage it. Because the things that I didn't know really hurt me. And if you are here tonight, I am willing to bet that you are a smart, savvy, hardworking person, just like I was. But you may not know just what you need to do to advance beyond this current level that you are. You may feel stuck. And my goal is to help you push past that because we are, we are capable of so much more. And until you know what you need to know, it's very hard to push past these boundaries. And that's actually one of the reasons that it got me passionate about career advancement and helping people develop this skill. So that's what led me to uh, create my program, Crack the Coach, to get promoted. And um, we talk about that at the end of this training. So I hope you stick around for that. All right. Are we ready to dive into the mistakes? I hope that's a big yes. Let's do it. Okay, guys, the first mistake, mistake number one, if you take nothing else away from this training, this is what I want you to know. Don't neglect your relationship with your boss. Neglecting this relationship is a career suicide. Now, I'm not saying your boss is necessarily a nice person or he deserves a good relationship. What I am saying is your boss is your gateway to success. Very few people, if any, are able to succeed without their boss's support. So your goal here is either to make the relationship with your current boss work or get a new boss. So most of us go through our careers. We work hard. We have our projects and our work. And as project managers, we have maybe several projects. And um, we may even be too busy to even pay attention to our bosses sometimes. So neglecting this relationship, is it just happens. And this is a big mistake because this person is really the gateway. This person can set you up for success or failure. And uh, this is very key. So ask yourself right now, and you don't have to tell me, but ask yourself, honestly, where is your relationship with your boss? Is it really good? Can you hear him talk positively about you in your absence? What would he really say he thinks about you when you're not there? Because this is really, really important. So that's the mistake. Let's focus on what you can do to make this work, to have a good relationship with your boss. Your motto, your goal, your, your mantra, your, your, your words have to always be developing your relationship with your boss. So you're always developing it. You're always building upon it. And let's talk about some practical things you can do to actually do this, right? The first thing is... Showing your boss how your work benefits him or her. And what do I mean by that? So as project managers, we have all kinds of projects. At some point in my career, I know that my project wasn't even directly related to my boss's agenda. 
he had another agenda. I had mine and I just happened to report to him. So it wasn't really his motivation to endorse me, to support me, to speak up for me. If he had to, he might, but he couldn't see the, the, the exact relationship. What you need to do is you need to understand what's important to your boss because he or she, they have a career, they want to advance, they have their own objectives from their own upper management, and they have their own number one priorities. You need to understand what is your boss's priority and then look at your work, look at your projects and connect the dots between what matters to him and what you are doing. And then you speak to that to your boss. So that's the idea. You want to connect the dots between your work and your boss. This, believe it or not, starts building the relationship. Okay, and I'll give you an example for all of these at the end of, end of the tips in each section so that um, I give you some context. All right, the second tip is uh, no matter where you are, no matter who you're talking to, even if you are at home with your family, I highly suggest you never, ever gossip about the boss. You never get in the habit of speaking negatively about this person. Again, I have really had bad bosses and I have, of course, made the mistake of doing all of this. So I was in the habit of always gossiping about my bosses. And I can tell you, this hurt me so much. It, it damaged my, all my hard work so much. And I had no idea because you need to be a cheerleader and supporter of your boss. So either you learn to speak highly of him or her, or again, if things aren't in a position where you can do that, you get yourself a new boss, but never gossip about your boss. All right. And the other one is taking the first step to mend broken relations, if you will. So for this one, I have a really good example. I have um, uh, a wonderful student who went through my Crack the Code program. His name is Kobus, and he is a IT project manager in South Africa in a big company. When he first came to me, he was not even on speaking terms with his boss. They just proudly ignored each other, and they had had something happen. There was an incident and neither of them had recovered from it. And so this was, this was the elephant in the room that nobody spoke about, but it had completely ruined their relationship. And so he was convinced that he was never going to talk to his boss. He didn't care to do that, and he was very proud of it. And what I suggested to Kobus was, look, I want you to be the first person to step in and mend the relations. And I'm not saying that just so you become this bigger person to go in and forgive him or her. That's good. But that's not a real motivation when we're talking careers. The real motivation here is when you do that, you are actually doing yourself a favor because you are, you are showing that um, you, you, you need this relationship to work. You need to build the trust. And in the end, when it does your boss is going to support you. It's going to really benefit you in the end. And the way I positioned it to Kobus, because he was so resistant to the idea, I am not going to do that. I'm not going to be the one talking to him. I said, look, why don't we think about it this way? Maybe have some compassion for your boss. Maybe he doesn't have the intelligence capacity to really understand what you were saying or what you were going through. And that made him work it out to, with his ego so that he could actually take the step. And to make a long story short, he is now being positioned by this same boss on major projects to take on major projects. So his career is completely shifting by this change in perspective and relationship. So this one's really, really key. Make sure you're in a good place with your boss. All right, let's move on to number two. That was the hardest one, I think. So we have that out of the way, right? <laughs> All right. Mistake number two, we let our hard work speak for itself. Don't do that. Your hard work does not have a voice. It does not speak for itself. So those of us that want to be humble and maybe we are shy, this may be difficult. But what's more difficult, you guys, is when you notice you've been passed over for raises and promotions because maybe your boss or your team lead or your director had no idea what you were doing. Now that's harder. 
So however hard this one is, I'm going to give you some tips, but don't be humble and shy and just let your work speak for itself. So one second, please. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to stand up and speak for all of your hard work. And as project managers, we are some of the most hardworking people in the company. And I can say this because I took on just about every role, from engineer to technical writer to sales communications, executive communications, sales operations. I mean, you name it. And I did a lot of project management. And I worked my hardest when I was managing those projects. So let's talk about what you can do. Um, This is the problem. We think if we speak to our work, we are arrogant. We are boasting. And nobody wants to be that, even myself. And that is not what you are being if you do it right. What you are being is a confident, assertive person. And it's all in the how of you speak to your work. And you know it because there is probably people at your company that do this really well. And then there is people that, oh, they just turn you off because they're just showing off. So let me give you some practical tips. For example, you could use phrases such as, uh, team, I just wanted to let you know, yesterday we had this problem and I took the initiative to go to our stakeholders and talk to them about it. And it turns out they are really on board. I took the initiative or another phrase is I took leadership in this particular project, in this particular task. And, uh, you're always crediting your, your coworkers, your team leads, your, uh, your p- peers, but you want to make sure especially your boss, is aware that you are making a major difference. And where is that difference? And you need to verbalize it. So don't let arrogance get in the way. Think confidence. Confidence says, you know what you're doing. You're doing it well. You are a leader. You are moving things forward. You are a taskmaster. And this is important. You yourself understand your value to your company and to your projects and to your organization. When you learn to speak to your hard work, people don't just look at you as a project manager. They start seeing you as a leader. So this is a habit I want you to really start developing if you don't have it already. Another one, skipping the details and mentioning what matters. And this is when you start speaking to your work. So as project managers, we love detail. That's our job. We have dates, spreadsheets, schedules, meeting minutes, tasks. We have to keep up with everything. That's great. But when you're talking to your senior director, your vice president, do they really need to hear the details? Think about it. They need to hear the impact. They need to hear, for instance, Not that you set up a meeting and you attended it and you took notes and you spent two hours analyzing your notes. No, they need to know that you build a relationship, let's say with a difficult stakeholder, and now that person can have a huge influence, positive influence on your project. Now that speaks volumes and it indirectly implies all the work behind it. So You want to learn to speak, first of all, to everyone's level at their level and generally skipping the details and talking about the things that really matter without, and I'm going to say it, without sounding boring. Because another thing as project managers that that we, we don't notice, but we may come across as boring to other people, so they just tune us out. So you want to make sure you focus on exactly what matters and what people find valuable, and then speak to that. And then if they need details, they can always ask. All right, so that's number two. And then number three, so this is a radical advice alert. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to work less hard. Actually, I've been having a conversation with a, with, a, with a colleague on LinkedIn going back and forth on this about working less hard. And I'm, stick to, I'm sticking to this one. Working less hard And um, understanding that you are not a slave to your project. See, when we don't know any better, we resort to what we know. And most of us have been taught that working hard and hard and even harder is the way to success. That's how I grew up. That's, That's all I knew. 
And working hard is very important, but it's not everything. And working too hard without doing everything else that matters actually hurts your career. So you need to start being more intentional about the kind of work that you do and learn to set boundaries and say no and also identifying in all the things that come across your desk. I mean, you guys are busy. People contacting you, asking for stuff. What do you ignore and what do you really, really focus on? And that's a level of detail we can't get into now, but that's the main idea. So, all right. And so, um, uh, Caesar, how are we doing on time? We're doing, we're doing great. And uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Um, I have a question about uh, right here, Farnoosh, uh, if you don't mind me uh, interrupting mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, one of the things we learn in project management is uh, when it comes to over delivering, you know, and I think that's what uh, one of the things you're getting to here is that uh, uh, we need to kind of uh, focus on that a little bit. But when it comes to projects, we all, you know, it's it, we learn through training and, and especially if we took the PMP exam, you mm -hmm. know, uh, we learn about over delivering and there is even a name for it. It's called gold plating. Right. Of course. And it's a, and it, you know that, and it's it's a no no, you know. So yes. uh, we're supposed to deliver um, the project or whatever we're doing according to scope, mm -hmm. um, and nothing more, nothing less. So how do you how do you address that in this case? Right, right. Yes, gold plating is discouraged. And um, excuse me, one second. <coughs> I'm so sorry about that. So yes, uh, gold plating is discouraged. I don't recommend it. Stick to scope. Skip to every. Uh, stay to uh, to everything that's within scope. However. There is a way you can be um, go above and beyond, if you will, without doing the gold plating. So think not so much directly about the project, but about things that indirectly can add value. For instance, I am really big on building relationships, and this was actually a turning point in my career when I learned how to build relationships. So building relationships with stakeholders is one example. I'm going to give it again. There are people who are very difficult to convince and to persuade in your job. Well, let's say on a project, you have to bring a few stakeholders on board. And the minimum you have to do is, let's say, get a yes from them, a signature, and then you're set. So you do that and you get your project done to scope, no gold plating. However, you also know, for instance, going back to what's important to your boss, that this relationship with this particular stakeholder in this particular organization is key to your boss. It's important to him or her. And you take a little bit more time, that extra work that you want to do, and you build a relationship. You build trust with this stakeholder. You align values and vision, and you make sure in the future this person is willing to help your organization. And then when you deliver your project to your boss, you're like, here's the project, everything's to scope, everything's on schedule, etc. By the way, you know Tom in this other organization? He's one of our best supporters now. So I thought that would be a really big plus, a big gain for us. And um, I'm really, really proud of that. I just wanted to let you know. Things like that, all right? So this is thinking sort of outside the project, if you will, to kind of rephrase outside the box. Do your project, do it well, but think about everything else where you can add influence, leadership, and value, and then people start looking at you differently. Does that help you answer that question? Yeah, it's almost like you can, um, you can over-deliver your uh your delivery on scope <laughs> exactly it, it, <laughs> that's it, one it, way to it, put it, it it's interesting yeah okay I, I i think i get it i think it's, it's a lot clearer now thank you yeah of course my pleasure i actually had another another example for this one i just got off the phone a few days ago with tom who's another person who's going to through crack the code and tom's story is fascinating you guys he is a project manager slash engineer in the financial world 20 years experience. He is extremely hardworking, extremely bright, and he wasn't getting anywhere in his career. So of course he did the one thing he knew what to do, which is what most people end up doing. He went and got his MBA on his own time, on his own dime. And um, again, he was a stuck. He wasn't going anywhere. And he was very hesitant to take my course I remember, but then um, we were just talking because he has this success story now where he is now 
able to get his what he calls his arch enemies when he came on board. He just, you know, had this uh, disagreement with some people. Now they are his biggest supporters and his boss loves him. And they are finally, finally giving him projects that actually matter. So he was always getting these corner projects, these things nobody wanted. And he is shocked because he started using the strategies that I talk about both here and in my program about shifting perspective, understanding what's really important and start speaking to that. Start noticing it. Start connecting the dots for your boss, for your team. And um, now he sees himself, I like his analogy, as a valuable product of his company. And he hopes that they never shelf him because he, he wants to keep up his value. So that's a really good analogy I thought he used. And, and these are the results you can expect if you put what we talk about here tonight to practice. All right, let's move on and talk about the third mistake, which is becoming a doormat to please everyone. Yes, I will do that. Yes, I will be there. Yes, I will attend this. Yes, I will help you. That's what we do. And it's not just women who do this. I have seen wonderful, talented men and women accept everything, say yes to everything, and then feel exactly like this poor woman in the picture, completely overwhelmed. That is no way to succeed. But we have to find the right balance. So let's talk about that. So we want to draw boundaries and say no more. However, we want to do it while we are still being nice, a team player, collaborative. Essentially, we want people to still love us because this matters. So let's talk about this. And I, I really struggled with this one. So the first thing is you have to start discerning between what's really important and what's just noise. And there is a whole lot of noise in our roles as project managers. So I'll give you an example here. I had a client who worked in a small company. He was a PM in the IT industry. And he used to run a report that took him two to three hours a week, every week, and um, among other things. But we started working together because he was feeling so overwhelmed. And I asked him why he's running this particular report, who looks at it, etc. He had no idea. So he had been running this report, never came up in his performance reviews. And I said, you know what? Let's not run it next week. <laughs> Let's just not run it. And nobody, not a single person complained. So things like that. And of course he gained two to three hours, right? So he was doing it because it was habit. And we do that because it's familiar. It's what we know. Busy work, believe it or not, can be therapeutic. It doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't advance you, but it can be therapeutic. And so when you're frustrated, you go back to running a report or playing with your spreadsheet. Well, these are the things that are taking up your time that may not be necessary. So... Be sure to take a look at all the work you're doing and take out what's not necessary, right? All right. Number two, people coming to you, asking you for guidance. You are a team leader. You are a project manager. What do you do? Well, the way I like to say it is you, don't, you can't coddle your team very much. People need to take responsibility. What you need to do is give just enough guidance to show them how to do something but not do it for them. So when I was at, I worked at Cisco, actually, that was the company. I had a, a project manager who ran the whole project and I was a, a project manager under her. She used to do the work of everyone who slacked at the end when it was deadline time. She used to do the actual work on their behalf because she didn't want the project team to look bad. And it's a very honorable um, goal. It's a very good way to look at it. But that was keeping her stuck because it was taking up her time and taking time away from the important strategic things she needed to do. And that's the kind of thing you really need to take a close look at. These may be disguised in your habits, in your daily habits. You need to be careful what you sign up for and understand the impact of it. If there is little to no impact and it's just busy work, you can politely decline and find a way to get out of it. So let me just bring this other one up because they're related. You want to say no in a way that makes them love you. 
It really matters what people think about you. You're in a company, you're in an organization. If you don't like it, you might need to, to think about your career all over again. But, but that's what we, we are doing, right? We're working with people and their opinion of us matters. So the way you do this is basically you have to, you have to say no, but do other things. So let me give you examples. For instance, somebody comes to you and asks you to, to join a meeting or something. You say, you know what? I am overcommitted right now, Jane, for example, but I really think Tom, who is working on this part of the project, would be a great person to attend a meeting. You say no, but you offer a resource. Let's say somebody else comes and asks for your help on something. And you would like to help them, but you're busy and you have more important things. You say, you know what? I'm so sorry. I can't help you, but I can introduce you to someone who is really good at this. And he or me, or he or she may have bandwidth to help you. You say no, but you introduce them to someone else. Or you say, no, you can't sit down and give someone a tutorial for two hours, but you give them three to four quick suggestions, or you suggest a quick training that they can take. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I have a question about this one. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, okay, um, just just so everybody's clear, because we're you know we're we are employees of companies, and uh, you know we're getting paid to do things for people. So, uh, what exactly are we saying no to? I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. that this is clear, because you know uh, one might make might make a point that well we need to say yes because we are like, right we're getting paid and and we need we're there to help and with whatever, right? Exactly. So, exactly. And, and that's a very good, it's a very good question. And, um, that's, that's our attitude, right? We are there to be helpful, to be there, to do whatever the company is asking of us. But when we become so busy, because if you're on this call, you're probably a very driven, successful, and super busy project manager. So every minute of your time matters. So the way I would look at it is think about the things that are asking of your direct time, your direct energy, your direct involvement, that's the stuff that's in short supply. You can certainly refer people to resources. You want to be resourceful. You want to be the person that knows how to connect people to someone else, how to tell them what tools to use, what, what training to take, what person to go to. That's okay. But if they're asking you to sit down and spend the time doing something that's not directly related to your project and is sort of a favor for someone and it's not really like you cannot connect the dots to the value it brings you. I'm not saying say no and walk away. Like I said, say no, but, but, but do something else. Offer a resource, introduce them to someone else, give them quick suggestions, suggest a training, whatever that may be. So don't be so quick to sign up for things that take up your time and your energy, more importantly, and then, um, of course, your, your effort and your, your concentration and all of that. So I hope that, gives, that, that, that makes it a little bit clear. And I gave some examples earlier on how to kind of turn down some of those requests so that, so that you can focus on more higher impact strategies and, and activities on your schedule. So that's, uh, that's number four. Was that number four? No, this is number four. Okay, so let's move on. Number four. So this one is a little different, but um, after a few years of uh, project management, I actually started to use this. I noticed that I was always sticking to the same old ways of project management. And, and by the way, I am PMP certified, so I have gone through that whole process. And there is definitely merit in following the rules and the methodology to a certain extent. However, I am here to tell you how to become a leader, how to be not just a project manager, but the best project manager and a leader. And so sometimes you might have to break the rules a little bit. So let's talk about that. So my suggestion here is to get creative and push limits a little bit to get noticed, but you got to do it the right way. For example, the first one is playing the edge without going too far. For example, let's say as an official part of your work, you are supposed to set up two or three meetings and you're supposed to get the support of all these stakeholders and your executive sponsors and ask for so much money on the budget and then go and record it. And you get three yeses and two noes. 
and then the meeting is over and that's that. Well, technically you got three yeses and two no's, but what else could you do to go back and get a yes from those two people? This may not be the old ways of doing project management, but it comes down to working with people, building relationship, understanding the resistance, which is some of the project management, I admit, but then actually going out of that and thinking, how else can you bring someone on board? Maybe there is a way, maybe there's a reason they are, they're not interested in working with your team. Maybe there is something going on with another like history of something. So there are ways you could actually break out of that box and go above and beyond and become the leader, use persuasion, use your influence, use other incentives to bring someone on board, right? So these are not necessarily in a PMP course. They don't necessarily teach us that, at least not when I took it, but this is a way to get noticed. Another way to get noticed here is, um, what was the second one? I'm sorry. Be ahead of the curve and explain it. So this one is where you are doing your job. You're using the known tools and apps and systems. And just maybe your company is not quite with it. They're not quite upgrading all the tools and the apps. I mean, I worked at a technology company and we used Internet Explorer until I don't know when, and Chrome and all these other explorers or browsers had come out, but we were still stuck because that's what IT dictated we should use. Well, how can you be ahead of the curve? For instance, um, I want to give you an example here. I had a client that was uh, struggling with adding some creativity to her work. So she was a brilliant project manager, but she couldn't find any way to feed her creativity juices. And she was working for a big technology company. And we talked about how she could use the internal blog and the internal social media system they had set up. This was at the very beginning of this stuff coming on in their company. And how could she use that in her project management to where she could do her project management work, but she could also use her writing skills and her influence on an internal company blog to talk about her project and do something that is totally outside of the PM rules. But um, this actually got her noticed and it got her assigned to a, a project with a lot more visibility. So she was ahead of the curve. That's my example of how you can think a little bit ahead of the curve and bring these solutions to the table. And you might just be surprised how, how much buy-in you can get for that. Hey, Parnush, can I? Um, yes, you may interrupt any time. Um, this is uh, this speaks to the core of of PM for the masses, you know, which is that uh, do something extraordinary and stand out and, uh, and and move up in that way as well. So be ahead of the curve is 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 big. So um, could you, because you work with so many uh, so many people, uh, including project managers, uh, even on coaching and one on one and you have a lot of uh, exposure to 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 these folks can you give us maybe a couple more examples of um something very tangible that people can do to be ahead of the curve um uh, if they work for for a company or or even a large company right so um so right now we have so many opportunities with Social media, I'm going to use social media again in a different context because I worked for, again, a technology giant and they were technically ahead of the curve on a lot of things, but the internal culture had not caught up yet with the use of social media. So there was a lot of fear, a lot of resistance, and anybody who brought it up was this uh, this person who just wanted to get attention. It was, it was a really weird time because social media makes some companies very paranoid. So what you could do is you could pick something. And social media is huge, right? When I say social media, we have how many platforms out there now? You could think about, think about your project, think about your industry, the space you're in, and, um, and keep in mind the, the confidentiality of the company, be sensitive to all of that, and put together a proposal that says, let's say, for instance, you, you, you determine this particular platform reaches our customers, our next generation customers, or our customers that are interested in our company, but are not buying or with, they're buying from the competitor. You kind of determine that relationship, that value, that connecting the dot. And you say they are here on this particular platform. I think we need presence here. And I think because we want to be sensitive and we want to have confidentiality, we need to observe these guidelines. And I want to take the lead here 
Mr. Boss or whoever. And I want to take the lead here to use this platform, to educate our team to use the platform and to put information out there that our potential customers can see, to develop relationships with them because that's what social media is all about. Big giant companies not being faceless, but being personable and developing a relationship. I mean, this is this is really big now, but a few years ago it wasn't. And still there are companies that are very resistant. So you could kind of take it that way. Use, find something that you're, that also interests you because you want to have some fun here and, um, and choose it and then draw the relationship to what you're doing. So again, using social media, using a particular app, a particular system. For instance, you notice that your system that you are on is so slow and you hear complaints from everyone and yet IT insists we cannot move, we cannot move. Well, maybe you could set up a trial period. You could say, look, I totally understand IT procedures. We're not going to move to this one. But for the Three weeks that we're doing this project, I was just going to propose we use the trial version of this app because it's supposed to be really good and it meets our goals. It's also very affordable. We could get one license for the team and I'm going to lead that and I'm going to take the responsibility for it. And then at the end of that, we can evaluate either it works or not. And then we can go back to the system that IT approves. So those are two examples. I hope those are relevant and give you some ideas on what I am here trying to encourage you to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I can add something too, I, I, I can't remember who I heard this from, but mm-hmm. one thing that, because you're trying to influence um, um, people who are above you in the, in the, exactly. in the food chain, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing how to, how to lead from, from, from under. Um, I heard, um, and tell me what you think about this. Um, a, a good idea is, let's say you, you have, um, mm-hmm. you, you come up with maybe two or three ways for uh, that the company could yes. innovate and you present them with with the, these options oh i just I, you know here are three ways that we can that we can improve this or that system and then let them uh, sort through them and choose one that way it's their decision and not yours yeah oh, yeah brilliant brilliant you bring a proposal give them more than one option not too many i would say three is perfect Give them pros and cons on each. Be willing to do either one. And then, yes, make it look like it is their decision or at least it's definitely collaborative. So that's I love that idea because, yes, you have to keep in mind you are also dealing with the upper management, maybe an older culture. You have to keep all of that in mind. So, no, that was very helpful. Very good. All right. Shall we move on? Let's do it. All right. So the third tip on um, pushing the limits to get noticed is becoming known for something specific. And what do I mean by that? So as a project manager, and especially after I got my PMP certification, I thought, all right, this is great. So now this is my, my specific skill. I'm PMP certified. That, my friends, means nothing to a vice president or, or a senior director or people who are just not familiar with what we do and uh, much less what is our certification all about. So you need to keep in mind what is the thing that's important to them and look at yourself and see whether you have that. And I'll give you examples. The skills and that your leadership values in every company, every industry, it doesn't matter negotiation skills. All project managers know how to negotiate. You just may not have thought of it that way. Persuasion skills, getting a yes when somebody says no to you. Facilitation, how many meetings do you attend? How many of them do you facilitate? A lot. Executive communication, whenever you deal with somebody in the upper food, uh, upper parts of the food chain, you're communicating with an executive and there is a certain skill related to that. Those are the type of skills that when you are interviewing for another project or another company even, you could say, of course, I'm PMP certified or I'm just a project manager, but these are my skills. You want to become known for valuable skills and you want others to know that, oh yeah, John, he is great at negotiation. Have him do it. So that's the kind of ways I want you to start thinking about yourself because when you start thinking about it that way and positioning yourself that way to your company, then people start seeing you that way. All right, so let's move on to the last mistake. And this one is a big one. We resist investing in ourselves. 
We think if the company's not going to pay for our training, then I'm not going to pay for it. No way. I already work here and, and all of that. We forget that we are our own biggest asset and investing in ourselves. Everywhere you go, you take that investment. And sometimes the company is not going to foot the bill. So what do you do? All right. So I want you to change your attitude here. You want to willingly and gladly invest in yourself. Just like you buy yourself all kinds of other things, this is also an investment. So my suggestion is take one training per month, even in a busy month, because this is about you and your career. And just to define training, that could be, sure, it could be one of your PDUs, but it could be beyond that. Maybe there is a leadership course you want to take. Maybe there is a weekend workshop in your city or, or in another state. Maybe there's a conference. Maybe there's a book you have been wanting to read that's related to something that's interesting to you. Anything that develops you as a more valuable careerist is training. So you want to at least give yourself one per month. The other one is knowing what dream career you want to have and then working backwards and slowly filling the gap. So this is the dreaded, where do you want to be in five years? But it's not quite that. I want you to not worry about your career and, and, and financial stability and all that. That's important. But what is your dream career? Where are you in your mind headed? Have an idea. Maybe you want to be a published author one day. Maybe you want to be a manager, a director, a vice president at your company. Maybe you want to become a speaker. And have that in mind somewhere. And slowly, starting now, take training and prepare yourself for that. Because small things add up. And the last one is, as you're doing all of this, pay for it. Sometimes you have to pay for it. Some of it is free. Some of it you pay for. But tell about it. Tell your boss about it. And I have a great story here that... um, I loved hearing this. This is from Mark Mason, who is actually a student from my previous course, and uh, he's a big supporter of uh, Crack the Code. He just interviewed me for his podcast. And Mark is a successful executive at uh, at a big tech company in, in Texas. And he wanted to take a training a few years ago. But for whatever reason, his management said no. So he decided he really wants to take this training. It was out of town. So he told his boss, look, I hope I can take the days off. I can take sick days. It's okay. But I'm going to pay for this training. I'm going to fly over there and I'm going to just pay my own way. And so he went on and did that. His management, his upper management, heard about what he had done. Not only did they come back and reimburse him for that trip and the entire training, They never again said no to him whenever he wanted to take training. And this goes to show you, as Mark said, he was dead serious about investing in himself. He saw himself as an important asset. And when his company said no, he said, okay, I'll invest in myself. That's okay. And that's the attitude that I want you to take on because you're saying, I know my own worth and I hope you do too. And I hope you can... Help me here. But sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. Either way, you want to learn to invest in yourself. Yes. If, and if you don't mind me jumping in here, mm-hmm. I just wanted to second that. <laughs> uh, it's This is so, so important. And and really, this is, I think, this is what uh, will separate uh, the men from the boys and the and the women from the girls, you know. Uh, this is this shows that you are in charge of, uh, of where you want to go. Um, and, and this is the right attitude, in my opinion, you know, like my, in my case, for example, I'm, I, I started the podcast and the blog and I, I make up, I make sure that I am reading at least two books at a time at any time, you know, <laughs> because you need to be growing. It's like riding a bike. If you stop, you fall, you fall. Yes. Right? Yes. Good example. And, 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 and there's, uh, such a, a culture out there that, um, of entitlement that, uh, that we deserve this, we deserve that. I'm not going to do it. That the little that you do to improve and invest in yourself um, really makes you stand out. And he, and like Mark, you know, I know Mark Mason, by the way. Oh, good. Uh, he's a friend of mine. And he, uh, the little that you do, you know, he just went for this training. I'll bet um, everybody took notice, you know, yes. well, to the point that they, they reimbursed him. So it doesn't take much for you to, no. um, not, not, and, and you win by investing in yourself. You learn something new and 
people take notice. So um, I just wanted to, to reinforce this point. It's really, really important yeah. from my, my point of view. Absolutely, absolutely. And I look back at my career and I actually regret not investing in myself when my company said, no, we're not going to do this. I was like, no way, I'm going to pay for it. That attitude, you want to shift that for sure. So thank you so much for, for adding there. So that was our fifth mistake. And now I'm going to do a quick recap because you might be wondering, what were the mistakes again? So let's do a quick recap for you guys. The first one was never neglect your relationship with your boss. The second one, letting your hard work speak for itself. You do not want to do that. You want to speak for it. Number three, becoming a doormat to please everyone. You do not need to become a doormat to be successful. You need to learn to draw your boundaries. Number four, sticking to the same old ways of PM, which is great most of the time, but to rise above everyone else and to show that you are a leader and for the next generation of your company, you want to get creative and get outside a little bit. And then number five, which we just discussed, resist investing in yourself, which of course you don't want to do. You want to invest in yourself. So I have some homework for you guys. I am all about putting things into action. And I bet there is some things here that you can start doing tomorrow, if not tonight. So to get the most out of this training, my call to action for you is answer this question. Which of the five mistakes are most relevant to you today? Right? And they are over here on this slide again. Take a quick look. Which of these are most relevant to you? And what I want you to do is pick one and then pick two actions you are going to take starting tomorrow that are going to change this in the right direction for you. So that's the homework. It's not that hard. And I I promise you, you will see results because this stuff works. All right. So I think, how are we doing on time? We're good. Okay. So let's keep going. All right. So I, I mentioned earlier, how are you going to also get promoted and move up? What if you want to do beyond what we talked about tonight? So if you are serious about getting noticed, getting promoted, which is what I always wanted, and um, getting the money you deserve, which is a lot more than you think, and if you are ready to make that change right now in your career, and if you don't want to stay where you are, at the the level that you are in your company, in your financial level for a long time, then um, Caesar and I worked together to put together something that um, we feel is a very super special offer. It's only for you on this call and for PMP for Masses crew. So that's you if you're listening here. And this is the, the program that I mentioned, Crack the Coach to Get Promoted. And I'm doing something that I rarely do, which is if you sign up now, I actually spend 30 minutes of free one-on-one coaching with you and you qualify for all the bonuses, which include a career master plan. The career master plan is basically shows you your entire career in one spreadsheet makes you go through that and then helps you kind of connect the dots as to where you want to go. You also uh, get something else in this program, which is different from regular digital programs that are out there. Most of them you buy it and then you never hear from anyone. But for mine, I want to stay in touch with my students. So I offer group coaching calls on a quarterly basis where you get one-on-one access with me and I monitor how you're doing in the program And you also become a part of our Facebook community, which is a private, safe community of like-minded people who are interested in getting noticed and getting promoted at their job. And um, what was the other detail I wanted to share with you? And yes, the, um, okay, so let me share. The link is here, pmpforthemasses.com slash promotion. And um, I believe Caesar is going to also put that in the chat window for you. And um, this uh, coaching is only for the first five slots. We don't have very many. And uh, this offer is only for 48 hours. So we couldn't extend it beyond that. And your investment for lifetime access is only for 97. So this is for those of you, again, who are serious because we touched on just the surface of this stuff. And um, this is for anyone who is just really really, really tired of being where you are and you want to just play a bigger game. And I know if you were here tonight, all of you are capable of this because you are driven, you care about your career and um, you are, you are really poised for more success. You just need to know what to do and where to invest your time. 
And I want to be your partner, your success partner in this process. So that's all I have for you. I am going to now turn it over to Caesar because we do have a Q&A section. We have a Q&A right here. And um, I believe you can put in your questions in the chat window or Caesar has been collecting them. Right? Yes. Um, but before we get there, I just wanted to um, to let uh, tell people that I actually, um, you give me access to, to, to the course so I could... Uh, uh, you know, Farnoosh, I, on, with PM for the masses, I, I want to be a resource to people and I don't want to overwhelm people. So I want to keep my list of resources really short. Good. <laughs> so, and, and, and this, uh, I went through um, most of, of this program that you um, you shared with me and this definitely made the list. It's it's a fantastic resource. And, and you know what? Um, this is the, the type of stuff that we don't learn in school. I mean, most of us project managers, uh, we come from either financial or engineering or some kind of technical mm -hmm. number crunching background. And we don't learn these things. You know, we don't learn. In fact, a lot of us will go into 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 this, these fields of study yeah. because we, we're not so good with people. The soft skills, it's not our forte. Right. And nobody ever teaches us. And this is a great opportunity. We talked about investing in ourselves. This is a great opportunity yeah. for you to go and, and learn these things that that you know nobody ever teaches us. So um, I, I just wanted to, before we go to the Q and A, just to kind of um, reinforce this um, this idea here that uh, um, uh, you 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 are providing us with a great resource. Um, especially when it comes to soft skills, people are always searching for soft skills. They land on my website all the time because they're typing yes, into Google. Yes, it's everything. PM soft skills. So. Exactly. Oh, that's funny. So, uh, yeah, and and you know, I'm I'm so glad you mentioned that. Thank you so much for the for for the shout out. And what I want to add is, you also don't learn this stuff in corporate. Nobody taps you on a shoulder and says, hey, don't make these stupid mistakes because they're going to ruin five years of your hard work. Nobody teaches you that. So you either make the mistake and have to turn things around or you have to really have good mentors and coaches and really know what you're doing. So this is something that I knew was lacking. I've never had a program that was so direct in, okay, how do I get promoted? How do I get a raise? How do I ask for what I'm worth? So that's what this is all about. So no, thank you, Caesar, And let's, uh, let's dive into the questions. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to reinforce that if you um, if you're listening, if you can type in a question there in the chat box, and uh, and I will uh, read it out to to Farnoosh, and I'd like to maybe get started and ask a question myself, Farnoosh. Please. Um, so, let's say, um, for example, right? Uh, let's say I am in project management, but um, I'm not necessarily looking to get promoted mm -hmm. to, an, to another project, but I want to go into a different direction, you know? Mm -hmm. um, this ha happens, I, I'm asking you because this this happens, uh, especially with the people I talk to uh, on the podcast and people who reach out to me. Um, a lot of times, uh, a lot of folks get tired of, of managing projects and they want to move into business development and yes. things like that. So, so um, what do you say... Um, to, to those folks. Yes, I love that because I, I, I came to that point in my career too. And, and um, sometimes our companies, believe it or not, don't know what to do with us project managers. So making that transition and positioning yourself for that. My course is really a leadership course, leading your career in the direction it needs to go. So it is definitely a good one for project managers, but I have people that take it from all different industries and it applies across the board because these are skills you need to position yourself where you want to go to your company and for them to see the value in you and actually putting you on that short list of next generation leaders. So switching positions, switching from one to another, project manager to manager, project manager to, to a different type of thing at your company is not as hard as you may think, but it doesn't mean you start going to look at the database of jobs. That doesn't happen that way. I teach you in this course how to create a position if it doesn't exist. And believe it or not, that happens more often than you can think because people come across and, and it, when your company realizes the valuable skills that you have, they will realize where to put you and how to use you. And when that's aligned with what you want to do, there may or may not be a requisition, that's what we used to call it, available for you. So they create it. 
So there is so many different ways you can make that switch. And yes, I do talk about that. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of us face that because changing what you do is part of our career evolution, if you will. So that is a section I do cover and the skills I teach you qualify you and make you comfortable in asking for those things that you need in a new direction, in a new opportunity. So yes, we are definitely covering that in detail in this course. Good. Um, I have a question for, for uh, from Doug here, and I just wanted to, before I, I ask this question, this is a very interesting question. I get uh, emails from people all the time who are looking for jobs or they're in transition, and mm-hmm. that's exactly what Doug's asking. Um, do you have any advice for a project manager there, that is in transition mm-hmm. and applying for positions? Not necessarily promotion, but they're trying to get into a new position. Yes, yes, of course. So whether you are changing to a new project or a new position, I mean, I think that understanding, so this is what I first start with, Doug, understanding your own value, your own skills, your own wonderful things that you can do for the company and getting really confident about it. You don't want to just say, oh, I'm a project manager. I've managed these projects, brought in a million dollars here, five million here. That's all great, but it's hard to stand out that way. So how you want to posi- you want to understand what is it that makes you special as a project manager. If I'm looking for a job, I, I'm for, for, for a project manager, I also know what else, what kind of person I'm looking for. So your personality, your strengths. You want to play to your strengths. So I help you understand your strengths and speak to them and understand how to connect the dots between your skills and wherever you are looking. So even though you're in transition, you may or may not, again, if you don't have a good idea where you're going, that's another topic. But let's say you know where you are transitioning to. Let's say you want to go into a more technical project management. So you know your skills, you know your strengths, then wherever you are applying, whether internal to your organization or outside to another company, you need to understand what they are looking for and speak to that. So that's all about positioning yourself for success. And and that's something, I mean, that, that those are the tips I would give you right now. We cover them in a lot more detail in the program. I would say understanding your strengths That's beyond PMP and project management and the the language that we use. It's the universal language that people can relate to. And then understanding the needs of the organization you apply to and where you're going. And that's going to be different for every interview, for every opportunity. And then being able to connect the dots so that you can answer the one question. Why are you, Doug, the ideal candidate for me? Why should I hire you? And once you get super comfortable with that, I feel pretty comfortable that you can start navigating and finding your place. But again, that's just touching the surface. So um, I I think that um, you will get a lot out of the program and um, it will also help you if you don't know where you're going. If you, some of us just sometimes don't know, I, I know I felt stuck for a while there. Um, it helps you figure it out. So, um, I address both of those. So I hope that helps. If not, you can ask a follow-up question for sure. All right. So, Doug, if you have a, thank you for that question. If you have a follow-up, you can type it there. Uh, And in the meantime, I have a question from Edgar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says he has a question related to mistake number four Mm -hmm. and becoming uh, becoming known for something specific. So, uh, he's asking if we are talking about soft skills. We are talking about what matters to your company. And the name was again, what? what was the name? Edgar. Uh, Okay. Edgar. Edgar, Sorry. I like to speak to the person. So Edgar, we are looking for something that matters to your company. Maybe your company is very much interested in the soft skills and most companies are, especially if you're going into a management or you're going to have visibility with the leadership teams or with your customers. But maybe your company, technical skills are more important. Maybe you understanding how the company's technical product works is a valuable skill to them and it helps you move around in the company. So I would say apply that advice, become the the skill to your situation, to your company, to your team and see where you can, you can find it. I would add that you want it to be something that you are interested in because for the longest time I used to go after whatever was going to take me to the next level and, and, you know, just trying to really climb the ladder. And my approach was, uh, was just not right. I was, I, I was completely ignoring what I'm interested in. And if we do that long enough, then we are not aligned and we cannot play to our strengths. Sooner or later it shows. So 
if you are interested in soft skills, if you want to become a speaker, for instance, and that's what you are interested in, start there, then find where that's of value, which is virtually everywhere. Everybody finds a a speaker skill valuable and then become valuable in that and know that that's your skill and position it that way. Talk to it that way. Tell people about it. And then opportunities start to show up. So I hope I didn't uh, confuse Edgar here. I hope I gave you some good tips, but if not, let me know. Yeah. And um, if I can just uh, give one example as well. Um, I was, um, I was, I, I don't know, Edgar, if you're, if you're feeling a little like, what is, what, you know, what am I, what are my strengths? You know, um, I was in that position a few years ago and then I started to take some steps to kind of do th- things and be more intentional. So I started blogging and I started working because, you know, I, I'm the project manager for a small company. So I had to learn about marketing and, and all these things. And now I'm in a position now that I can have a very comfortable conversation about this value that I can bring. Like, let's say if I ever have to look for a job, uh, I, I know that these are my strengths, you know, connecting with people and, and even interviewing and, and all these things because I, I took the time to invest in them. And now I'm comfortable in my own skin when I'm talking about these topics. Right. And I think this is a Farnoosh, This is along the same lines of what, yes. what, what yes. you're talking about. So uh, finding your strengths and investing in them. And then all of a sudden you become really comfortable. And that shows, you know, in a job interview totally. or if you're applying for promotion, um, uh, you'll be approached even, you know, that's why what's been happening to me now. You know, people approach exactly. me for advice and for because they kind of know that this is these are my strengths. So Right, right. And and another thing I'm going to add really quickly, you may already have skills that you are not aware of because you've never verbalized them. So one thing you could do, Edgar, is go to your closest colleagues and ask them, what would you say is my best skill? What do you see me doing really well? And see what they say. Because sometimes it's really hard for us to see ourselves. So you want to step outside of the frame and get some perspective from the outside. And that can be another way to find out, you know, what is it you're already really good at that you may not even notice Mm -hmm. now uh, farnoosh i don't know um, we're probably going over the 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 one hour here Uh, there's a couple more questions i don't know if you have time i do of course i do okay i have a question from doug and i i think this is a uh, second doug (laughs) okay Uh, so he says that he struggles with mistake number three uh, being a doormat. And okay. He's a project ma- manager in the construction industry. Okay. And he says he has limited resources and um, human resources. So mm-hmm. typically just a job superintendent and a general foreman that directs the work on the job site. And um, and I'm assuming there are some contractors there that don't report directly to him. Mm-hmm. So uh, they don't have the skills or, or the job title and responsibility. So they, they're they they're outside of the the organizational chart, I think that's what he means. Um, so also uh, he's, he says he has to work laterally with the general contractors and other companies. Mm-hmm. So he finds it difficult to say no when so much clearly falls within his responsibilities. So any advice? Right, right. Well, well, um, several. First of all, um, I would say at least, at the very least, okay, you may be right, you may not be able to say no, but sometimes we forget everything that we're doing, Doug. So take a stock of everything you're doing, okay? So just like make a list, a long list. I talk to this person, I manage this, I do that, I do that, I do that. Look at all of them and just put them in priority order. I know they're still need, they all need to be done. Put them in a priority order, put the stuff that's most important on top, then the less, lesser important stuff and take a look at it and and see whether you are at least aligning to that in that you have limited time you have limited energy we're all human are you spending majority of your time where it matters most to your company to your performance review later to the project whatever Are you at least somewhat aligned or are you spending, I don't know, hours and hours talking to a customer that's still not committing? I'm just throwing an example. So at least start to, first of all, look at the whole list and see whether there is something you could drop. You may not realize it. You may be doing so much, you may forget about some of it. And then make sure you put it in a right priority so at least you have a visual that keeps you true to your priorities And then I would say uh, whoever you report to needs to know that this is the situation you have. And because you have so much load, at least they need to understand the consequences. And uh, depending on how hard you're working, I mean, if you're working 60 to 80 hours a week, you know, that's a lot. So at some point, this is going to have a 
a negative impact on on you, on your health, on 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 how much you are continue to you're, you're able to to maintain this this uh, this mode. And I would say just have an honest conversation with your supervisor. Make sure they understand. See if they have any advice, any suggestion. Don't ask. Just see if they have any advice. Just just bring it to their attention, and uh, let them know you're willing to do it still. But is there anything that that they could possibly take off your plate? And um, I would say maybe uh, try to. Um, gosh, I mean, I am I'm not intimately familiar with the construction industry, but I I know you guys work hard. But um, I'm wondering if there is anybody that you could train to do what you're doing, or there's any kind of additional training where you can learn a skill that can that can help you, any kind of delegation. I'm sure you've thought of all these basics. Um, and the other one is really understanding that um, in the end, some of the work that we do, I mean, even this in my business right now, I sometimes look back and see some of the work that we do actually doesn't result in what we it should result in. So at least do a self-evaluation. Every few weeks, look at the effort, look at the hours you put in, in this segment, in this segment, in this segment, and see what it resulted in. And if it didn't, adjust your commitment to it, if you will. If you've gone back and forth on this particular project and you're still not able to make progress, maybe give it a rest for a little while and move on. I mean, try to do everything that helps you come back to this alignment being true to your priorities, slowly taking off, uh, I'm sorry, um, transitioning off from a commitment and focusing on the other commitments. And again, I need to know more details to see whether I can help you actually say no to some of them and, and help you reevaluate. But those are some of the suggestions that I hope you can put to work right now to at least give you more grounding, give you more confidence that you're doing the best that you can and then also inform your supervisor so they know, and you never know, maybe they have a resource or support to, to help you. Mm -hmm. And for if, if I can jump in as well, please, because I'm in the, I'm in the construction industry. So I kind of, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, giggling a little bit here because uh, saying no is such a, uh, such a common thing in the construction industry. <laughs> you know, oh, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm always at the construction sites and, Anything I want to do, it's it's. It seems like I can't. There's some sort of safety, <laughs> something that I don't have, and so um, um. Number one, I, there's a lot of people saying no there, and maybe you just <laughs> need to ask their advice on how they do it. That's funny. But um, but Doug, you say here that uh, you have difficulty saying no when the person, uh, what the person needs is is within your job description and responsibilities, and perhaps um, and, and maybe I'm 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 wrong here, but maybe um, one thing that that could help you is um. Uh, personal productivity, you know, and 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 being better at um, organizing your tasks, and and maybe maybe you are overwhelmed, and there is way too much too much on your plate, and that's mm -hmm. uh, and the the tips that Parnoosh gave you are fantastic, but um if if it's uh, maybe it could just be a, a way of a, you have to like reorganize the way you're handling the projects, and there is a, a book by a, a guy named. Uh, Peter Taylor, he was a guest on the show, the first episode of, the, of my podcast, and it's called The Lazy Project Manager, and he has some great tips on, on how to manage projects and stay st stress-free um, uh, and, and still manage to, to deliver everything that you need to deliver. So I recommend you go to, um, can you either go to thelazyprojectmanager.com or, um, or go to pmforthemasses.com slash one and listen to my interview there, and definitely check out... Um, uh, Farnoosh's uh, program because, not only because of the, the awesome content that she delivers, but there is the community, you know, and, and, and I, yeah. I'm the first to, to say that there's so much power in the community. Um, and and you can bounce questions off and as they come up, so let's say you had a, a hard day today and uh, people are asking too much of you, you can go and, and ask for advice, you know. Yes live you know right uh, so um the, the best thing that i've ever done in you know in my professional life was to join um, a mastermind group which is like similar to what farnoosh is offering here yeah. uh, a private group where you know people that you trust and we're in the same journey and you can bounce ideas off of each other use them as sounding boards and 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 um yeah so a combination of uh, farnoosh's program the book and uh, and maybe the community aspect of her program um, I'm sure you would um, really benefit you. Yeah. 
And then we also do the quarter, well, we have the free coaching that, that you can get if you sign up today, but we also have the quarterly group coaching calls. And that's something I do that's very different. If you just buy a program, sometimes you just go off, you download it, you're done. But this one, I keep up with you. Like I want to know how people are doing. So we do round table in those calls and everyone gets 20 minutes with me where they bring in their most current pressing problems and we actually solve it and or we, we you know try to do as much as we can on the call so there is that access and uh, and coaching aspect to the program and um, and I think it's because we need it we, we need it to really make these changes these are not easy changes and and it took me years to to get here so um, so good so I hope this helps you Doug and um, I wish you the best I do and uh, and he, he just mentioned here that he uh, good advice. I okay. think you told me to work with intention instead of fighting fires, and that's uh, good. That's a good good way to put it. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> any more questions, Pardon Caesar? Uh, um, I I don't I don't see any more questions here. Um, we're running a little bit late. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, including sure. especially you, Farnoosh. No you've been uh, generous enough. So, uh, Farnoosh, do you have any final uh, thoughts for us? Um, you know, I, I just, I was just so honored to be here tonight and to, uh, because I remember what it was like to be there as a project manager and in my job, frustrated, not knowing what to do. And, and I'm just so proud of all of you for investing in yourself tonight by being here in this program, by taking something away, by taking action tomorrow. I know you will. And also, if you have any questions about the program before you sign up, either contact me or Caesar. We are here to answer any questions you have because I want to make sure you feel this is right for you. And um, uh, we're here. So reach out, let us know. And I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you took something good away. Thank you for having me. Farnoosh, um, on behalf of uh, PM for the Masses and the, the whole community here, people signed up in droves here for this webinar. Uh, there was a little bit of a, a couple of uh, technical glitches here. Some people couldn't see it, but they will have access to the, yes. the, to, to, to the video. And on behalf of all of us from PM for the Masses and the community, I want to thank you for your time.